I'm gonna give you three steps to follow to troubleshoot, diagnose, and solve any particular Linux issue that you are encountering. I'm also gonna go over the most common issues that I have personally encountered and how I would approach troubleshooting those particular issues. My goal with this video, my, my approach if you want to call it that, is essentially narrowing down the scope of the problem until we figure out what the actual problem is. Whether that's going to be, you know, a particular program or a particular configuration or whatever else. Because my logic is once you actually know what the problem is, it's generally pretty trivial to solve because chances are somebody else has already encountered that problem before you and they've probably posted their solution on the internet for anybody to go find. So so once you actually have that problem figured out, that's going to be the, the majority of the headache of troubleshooting. It's actually figuring out what is the source of the problem. Once you know the source of the problem, chances are you can solve it from there just by looking through a wiki or a forum or whatever else. So anyways, this is going to be a pretty long video. I will put timestamps on as much as possible, and I'm also going to bother with editing the video for once. The first step is identifying the precise problem that you are experiencing. So no generalized, oh, my audio doesn't work or my display doesn't turn on. No, you have to figure out what exactly is going wrong. And I'm going to show you a couple examples to illustrate how you want to be doing this. Um, to start off, there's an example on the Arch forums. I was just looking through the recently posted threads to find a decent example of somebody giving a detailed explanation of the problems they are actually experiencing. So this user had a bunch of strange problems happening with their system that didn't necessarily seem to be correlated at first at least. Um, so they had, you know, stuff refusing to launch, but I wanted to point out a couple different things that they did really well in terms of analyzing the problem problems going wrong with their system. Um, so for example, when they were using kill all Thunar and then they were relaunching Thunar, it works but only one time, which is really important to note something like this. It works but only one time, or anything else that involves a logical order of causation. So for example, this thing happens, then this next thing happens, and only then does this other thing not work. Because that's going to point to, okay, either something is impacting all three of those things, or the first two are impacting the third. Um, this just gets into the logic of how these things might potentially work. So it's very important to, as you are going through to try to diagnose your issue, note down what is happening and in what order. So that's the first thing that this user did really well. Um, something else that I think is really important to note is that they actually tested it on their laptop, um, which is really useful to try to test the same thing, if you can, on another system, or if you don't have another system to test on, you can always just use a fresh user account on your current system. Um, you could actually plug in just a live USB drive of any distribution to go ahead and test on that. Or you can back up your current configuration, blank out your configuration files and retest just on your current user account if that's applicable to your situation. Um, for this person, it turns out the issue is just the latest uh, version of their window manager had a bug with it and they downgraded and it was fine. But anyways, I think they did a really good job searching through and figuring out, okay, what are all of the various things going wrong here and making a careful list of what was going wrong. I also want to talk about error messages a little bit, since I think a lot of us have a tendency to kind of uh, shut off our brain when there is some huge error message, you know, just getting spit out. Um, me included, I often will kind of skim through an error message before I actually try to go carefully read it. And I think it is important to really carefully read what the error message is telling you, because a lot of the time it's going to tell you exactly what went wrong. So I did a few commands here and screenshotted the error messages. I, I specifically had to try to break some stuff since I didn't have anything Thing, like broken at the time so I you know I had, to, I had to break some stuff to get some screenshots anyways so uh, for example the classic if you run two pac-man instances at once well you can't run it twice at the same time so the database lock is present it's gonna give you the path of that database lock and then it's just gonna tell you okay there's another pac-man instance running so imagine if you had this error message but you know maybe there's 50 lines of text before and after it that are telling you all sorts of various things okay that's when it starts to get you know a little bit confusing to kind of sift through all of that text but if you can look for a line that either gives you a file path to something relevant in the error or it tells you okay there could be this particular thing going wrong that is what you want to be looking for um the same thing with these other two error messages so for example trying to run mpd when i already have mpd running well it's going to fail to bind the socket because the address is already in use mpd is already running on that address 
Um, same thing with trying to start X um, when I'm, you know, currently in an X server. Okay, it, it can't connect to the X server because there is one already running, and that is because um, this is in a graphical terminal here. Um, I'm not on the, you know, TTY console, so it tells me only console users are allowed to run the X server. Step two, you want to gather and note down any relevant context or information. And in my opinion, one of the first things that you want to start with, assuming it is relevant to your problem, is diagnosing whether this is potentially a hardware issue, which is incredibly important and will save you a lot of headache if it turns out that yes, it is a hardware issue and you don't have to go through all of the various system troubleshooting just to hit a dead end of realizing, oh, this was a hardware issue. Um, and I want to give you an example of this, which um, is a couple weeks ago. I had a drive I was working with and I kept getting a ton of read write errors like I would plug it in I would try to transfer some files halfway through I start getting read write errors and I'm like what is going on you know I couldn't figure out okay is my drive the issue do I have something wrong with my system here that I don't know about it turns out it was the cable and by figuring out that it was the cable uh, within like 20 minutes or something I saved myself potentially hours of trying to diagnose some problem that didn't even exist because it turns out okay it was just hardware it was just the cable having issues so that's the first thing you want to start with when you're gathering your, your context and your information assuming that is actually relevant of course if it is some very clear issue with a particular program then yes it's it's unlikely to be your hardware I don't want to say it's never gonna have anything to, to do with your Hardware, but if it's a particular program having issues, potentially unlikely and is probably related to the software. So the next thing that you want to ask yourself is, has this ever worked in the past? And if it has, have you changed any relevant configuration files? Have you accidentally or intentionally modified system files that could impact this particular program? Have you installed any new hardware or software that could somehow be impacting this? And you notice that, uh, as I say, you know, this could be impacting, you might have done this. Um, I'm using that wording because a lot of the time you might modify something that unintentionally impacts a bunch of other stuff. And I've had this experience a lot where I will be trying to do one particular thing and then that unfortunately has unintended consequences elsewhere and I managed to mess up something that would seemingly be unrelated because I modified one thing that somehow impacted a bunch of other things. So it's important to keep in mind, okay, even if you modify one thing that you think is unrelated to everything else, it could still be related. Um, have you experienced correlated issues? That's essentially what I was just discussing. Or have you performed any system updates that may have impacted what you're trying to figure out here? Whatever is going wrong, if you've performed any updates that have impacted packages that could be related to that, well, you might want to check your update logs and see if anything relevant was there. Because one of the early on steps you might want to do is just downgrade any relevant packages, see if that fixes the issue, and if so, figure out, okay, is this a bug with the package? Did I, you know, somehow perform a partial upgrade? Figure out if updates is relevant in your particular situation. You also want to check, okay, is this a system-wide issue or is this a user-specific issue? Um, this is something pretty easy to test. You can either create a new user account and test it on that user account, or you could carefully go on your root account and test it there. However, do keep in mind, obviously the root account is essentially the admin account. So that's gonna have all sorts of other various permissions um, that could impact, you know, whether something does or doesn't work. For example, it might work on root, but not work on your user account. So in general, it's better to just test on a brand new fresh user account. You could always test if you have the option on alternate hardware. If you have, you know, a separate system or a laptop that you could test on, that's generally useful, especially if you're hitting dead ends on your current system. And I also want to stress, you only want to change one thing at a time. You don't want to be changing a bunch of different things at once because two, two things with that, okay? First of all, say you actually do find something that fixes your problem. Well, you won't know what it was if you just changed like five things and one of those other five things could have impacted something you didn't want to impact. Or if you're just changing things randomly and you're just changing so many different things, you don't even know what you're doing. Well, you could be doing all sorts of damage to your system. So carefully change one thing at a time and note down all of the changes you're making and really take notes on this whole process as much as possible if you're trying to troubleshoot something super complex. 
Step number three, now that you have narrowed down, hopefully, where your issue is actually happening, check any pertinent logs and configuration, either program logs for relevant programs, relevant configuration files, either user configuration or global program configuration, and if you're on a distribution that uses systemd, which is most major distributions out of the box, check with journalctl, um, learn to use journalctl properly, um, and the ArchWiki, as usual, has a great article about it if you you want to learn how to read through journal CTL logs and, you know, follow through, understand exactly what it is telling you. As usual, the ArchWiki does a really good job of explaining how to use the systemd related commands. I also want to mention you should just research as much as possible um, as you're trying to solve your issue and also to figure out what the right solution should be. Because you want to find a solution, not just a workaround. Um, a workaround can work in a pinch if you need to solve something so that you can like get on a work call in two hours. Well, yes, a workaround uh, better do it for now. But uh, long term, you do want to be finding real solutions rather than just, you know, duct tape workarounds. Um, of course, you know, I, I say this um, as I currently have my microphone sitting on a camera battery because my microphone stand is broken. So um, anyways, find solutions, not workarounds, guys. Uh, but you should uh, search through wikis, search through forums, and even search engines. You can actually search through a search engine and filter out particular sites or exact matches to your search terms. So it is worth uh, learning how to use search engines really well, um, especially in the age of a lot of search engines being really trash and flooding everything with AI results, which of course is super annoying. But you can still use search engines if you filter out exact matches, you search on specific sites, etc. And of course I did want to point out you can search the Arch forums and you can search through for keywords and in the particular uh, forum area that you want to search in. Um, I'm highlighting the Arch forums here since I'm personally using Arch, but of course search on whatever forums are relevant to either your distribution or your program or whether it is in GitHub issues that you need to be searching or even on just some other unrelated forum where people are offering assistance. Um, I also wanted to talk about later on, I'm going to get to this, I, I kind of want to turn this comment section if we can into like a little bit of a help exchange you know back and forth but um i'm gonna get to talking about that a little bit later anyways so if all else fails make a post on forums and chances are if you have done all of the work on your end to figure out exactly what is going wrong and you know where the problem is happening somebody will likely be inclined to help you Let's talk through a bunch of the common issues and solutions to those issues that I have encountered. I want to start with a file that I made a while ago to go with a video, essentially going through Arch related problems and solutions. But the thing is, a lot of these apply to much more than just Arch, especially stuff like booting. Like booting issues, for example, you want to use Supergrub to get back into your system. What is Supergrub? It is an ISO that you can slap onto a USB disk, and it is essentially going to detect any potential boot entries and allow you to get back into your system in case of some serious issues where you're just unable to get in. So Supergrub is what you want to go get. I will link that in the description. Um, I also have a bunch of other boot troubleshooting steps in this guide, so I'm just going to link this guide directly, um, and I'm also going to link the video where I go over this guide in a lot more depth. Um, I wanted to point out uh, another thing in this guide, which is Pac-Man and package issues. Um, Mirror-related issues specifically, if you have mirror-related issues, resync your mirrors with Reflector, and beyond that, you probably want to resync your mirrors pretty regularly, um, regularly as in every few months to every year or so. I've found that this actually helps me avoid errors uh, with mirrors. It's possible that maybe in my particular location, the mirrors that I am getting to often have errors, so I'm not going to say that's a hard rule, but I have found that if I resync my mirror list every so often, you know, every few months when I remember to, um, that is generally pretty helpful for avoiding mirror related errors. Anyways, I will link this uh, file in the description as well as my video where I went over it in depth, um, just because I'm not going to waste your time and remake a video on something that I've already made that chances are a bunch of you have already seen already. Anyways, let's go to some other errors that are not in that list. So. 
if you have lots of IO errors, um, as I said earlier, you want to check your cable. That's probably the first thing that you want to check. If you're having weird errors with any piece of hardware, so for example, like your keyboard is like double typing or your mouse is moving weirdly or say, you know, for example, my webcam here, how it was having this issue where it just kept shutting off. Um, it's actually a camera plugged in with a cable. But anyways, it was the cable that was the issue. So um, always check your cables, um, moral of the story here. But if you are having a bunch of weird IO errors on a drive and it's not the cable, then run FSCK on the drive and diagnose if you have any issues with your drive. Because if your drive is failing, you want to make sure you back up all of that data as much as you can and then you get a new drive so you don't run into a situation where you're losing data. If a file system is remounted as read-only by the kernel, you don't want to immediately remount that as read-write. You want to actually see why the kernel did that, because the kernel is generally trying to protect your drive if it's going to remount it as read-only. So it is to pre prevent damage on your drive. Um, you want to run FSCK, as I said, to find errors, but uh, you want to make sure, okay, is this a failing drive or do you just have some random bad sectors after you had, you know, some sort of a crash or power loss. So it's important to distinguish between the two since obviously if you have a failing drive, well then you need to get a new drive. But if you just have some bad sectors after a power loss, you can generally repair those. It's also important to check if you're having um, mount issues overall, is your Etsy slash FSTAB file still correct? Do you need to be updating this file to um, regenerate your FSTAB entries? If you have a generally slow system for no apparent reason, you should see if your temp directory is full. Um, I encountered this a couple times. The last time I was working on uh, a huge video editing project, my temp directory kept getting full and I kept having, you know, a super slow system. And I was like, what, what is going on here? Well, it turns out the temp directory was full. So um, if you have a really slow system and you have no clue what is possibly going wrong because there's no, you know, rogue programs or anything like that, then check to see if your temp directory is full. Um, if you have a library mismatch error or a library not found error as you are trying to run a program, uh, something I should mention by the way, if you are trying to run a graphical program, it doesn't launch, run it directly from the command line because that will show you if there are any errors as it is trying to launch. Anyways, if you have a library mismatch or the library isn't found, you want to reinstall both the package and the relevant library, and that generally will fix it. Um, I've generally found sometimes even when um, I reinstall something, or sorry, not when I reinstall, when I update something but I haven't reinstalled another program that uses that library, I have to then reinstall that other program because the library was updated. So just make sure you have everything updated and everything reinstalled if you're getting any sort of weird weird version mismatch errors. If you're getting uh, permission denied errors, you probably know how to solve those. You either want to change the ownership of the file or you want to run the command as root. Um, of course, be careful when you're running commands as root, only run things that you trust as root. But if you're having weird permission related errors, especially if you're trying to do something uh, when it comes to hardware. So an example with my camera again, um, I have to run the command to mount my camera with sudo. It, it has to be done with root. So sometimes you will have to do things as root. So if you're having all sorts of permission denied errors, just try running it as root. Just make sure you trust the program that you're running. If you have high CPU or memory usage, um, check and see if you have any rogue processes or a memory leak somewhere. Um, I was actually working on a bash script a while ago that I had accidentally left something in that was just launching process after process after process, and my memory was just going up and up and up, and I was like, what is going wrong? Well, it turned out I had like a thousand processes running that I had launched from that shell script that I was working on. So um, be careful you don't do that, but overall, if you do have some weirdly high CPU or memory usage. Um, check all of the various Linux commands to figure out, okay, what is going on with my processes? What is using high memory? What is using high CPU? And then kill the process as needed using the relevant kill signal. So if you really need to kill a process that is not responding, use kill signal nine. Otherwise, look through the various available kill signals and figure out what is the best matched kill signal for your use case. Okay, so as I was mentioning, it would be really cool to try to turn this particular 
comment section into kind of an exchange to help each other learn to troubleshoot. Um, not necessarily for very particular issues. Obviously, different distributions and different programs have dedicated forums to go to for help. But if anybody is just trying to, in general, learn how to troubleshoot better on Linux, those of us who are using Linux, or just in general, whatever operating system, I think the troubleshooting concepts are really the same across the board. If anybody has troubleshooting questions, I would really encourage those of you who know a lot about Linux, which I'm sure is many of you, I'm sure a lot of you probably know a lot more about Linux than I do. So I would encourage anyone who already has that knowledge and is already really experienced with troubleshooting to help anyone with questions who has less knowledge and is trying to learn how to do stuff. Anyways, I hope this guide was helpful to you and I will see you next time. Peace.